Hey guys, um, we're gonna be updating the source that we compiled a few days ago. Uh, this is very important to do on a regular basis because many times updates that you're able to get like hot fixes and uh, additional instances and dungeons will be available, uh, but they might not work all the way. So future uh, patches will be able to fix that for you. So before we do anything, this is our core folder. This is what we're gonna work with. Uh, I usually uh, back this up whenever I, uh, <laughs> I update it and it will take a bit of time. So I'm gonna pause the video and gonna resume. All right, guys, it's done. Uh, I have the backup right there. So this is the core folder. And what I do is right click, get extensions, and I just do uh, pool. Now what it does, it basically fetches all the information within this folder in there. And uh, it compares it to the GitHub information. Um, In here, there are several uh, GitHub uh, revision checkups methods and all that uh, fun stuff. And what we do is basically make sure that this specific folder has its relevant information and it will compare it with this address. This is why it's important that when you download the source for the first time, you don't do just the download button, uh, download as zip, it will not work. You will need to up to download the zip folder every single time you want to update. We just leave this as default and it should now start everything make sure there is an actual update to download and when it is done it will do exactly what it just did most of the updates will be c plus uh will be sql uh we have a few lines here <laughs> yeah you can see pretty much everything um please notice that trinity core has the automatic installation built in so that is important to maintain and keep up by simply executing world server and that should work uh some of the times it will include a few new new scripts new updates and when a new script is being introduced we will need to regenerate the build folder regenerate means we just do cmake and the same process as as if we first install the server uh, other times when it does not include a new new script it does not require regeneration of the entire solution it just requires us to recompile it so we will know by compiling it and if we see any sort of error it should be okay for us to regenerate so i'm gonna keep this one open and let's hope for the best. I did not see any new C++ objects, files that is. So I believe we should be good to go simply by executing this one. And do keep in mind, <coughs> do keep in mind that all the SQL data will be implemented automatically. Uh, and in case anything goes wrong, we can go back in here and we still have the backup folder. Uh, we can extract out of this uh, WinRAR file. So let's wait. Yeah, build, build solution. Now I'm gonna pause the video once again and I will resume when it is done. All right, so it is done compiling. It is a day later because I had to go uh, previously, but it is done now. Uh, this is why I use a virtual machine because my PC was busy. 
and this one wasn't being modified by anything uh, so it is always good to have this on your VPS or dedicated machine so anyways it is done compiling so we will go back into the build folder and bin release with debug information and execute everything as if it is the in, in usual time we just want to put the server up when we will execute this you will notice that we will have database modifications it will apply several uh, new SQL queries now how do we just delete that gonna <laughs> use me the default one so how we actually know where is it being implemented and what does it actually apply that is very simple instead of going in here I will open a new folder uh, go to uh, file explorer go to desktop server lens and since we've applied everything from the core folder it applied everything into the core folder so the SQL modifications are being stored here SQL and updates uh, world and it should be in here the 13th yeah there you go all these are new modifications that we will have implemented uh, if there are several characters updates as well into this database into the characters database then obviously it will apply it as well as long as this database has a valid connection which is all through the configs so this one yeah nothing really done and same for authentication I believe nothing there you go so we know we're done and we can execute all of it properly now let's assume let's assume that for whatever reason we have to apply it manually uh, we simply go into world because we know we have this as a an unchanged uh, modification we can execute we can select all of these and obviously we can delete everything that is not what we need because this has been executed by default but let's assume that for whatever reason this one doesn't work you can simply uh, drag it in here and you can implement all of them manually uh, it will show you what you're going to apply and it will update the database for you because this one has a column uh, at the end I don't really remember the name I think version was the name go to data and yeah this is the version that you have but now it had something else updates yeah this one um, yeah it, it updates this one as well so this is how the core knows what has been updated and what has not been updated and this is how it defines what needs to be executed and what does not uh, version this is how we know this is how the core knows when we pull a new version this is how it knows how we actually did all the stuff that we pulled just now uh, it saves everything if we would have made it uh, dynamic it would have done dynamic in here but we did static and uh, this is what it should display and yeah but basically this is where it's it, it gets all the information from and when we pull this is exactly what it needs in order to apply new modifications now let's assume you have an error in here you have a few that failed a few that failed basically meaning uh, there there are a few scripts that were not implemented correctly because when you add a new script you need to update the script loader the script loader does not work well if you simply recompile you will need to regenerate a new um, a new generation a new solution a new folder this will not work on build anymore you will need to create build 2 or boot or build 2 and yeah what whatever it will be your name and uh, this is where you will need to copy the bin you will need to copy the dbc maps vmaps and all these things configs 
libsql restarter config here as well you will need to cut them you do not need to copy it cut and you will need to paste it into the new build folder and you should not rename it when you rename it it will not work because this is the new location of the updated source so since we do not need this one anymore we can delete it we go into bin and we will go and execute and just witness as a few database updates are being implemented using password doesn't really matter it simply says that this is a uh, being done since it is local usage only no one can really access it but you guys so that is done this is how you add uh, this is how you update your own uh, server uh, let me just check if there are a few additional updates so I can do this real quick show you guys again since it is a day later github Go into Trinity Core and go into R335 branch. Yeah, 15 hours ago. I don't know if this is the version that we have. I don't think so. I think we can pull another update. You know what? Let's just give it a shot. Let's just show you how it is when it says it is the most up-to-date version we go into pull once again uh, notice that we have the backup folder and my backup folder is a bit heavy because I have don't need you I have actually no I do need you come back <laughs> uh, I have it within the SQL I have in the base I have this one implemented here uh, you don't really need it. You can keep it if you intend to move it around, but I highly recommend not storing it for too long because the database that you need is up here. It is this one. All the modifications you make, the, the big file I just deleted does not save all the modifications you will make over time. It will be based upon this, whether you decide if you're your version is up to date or not. So, uh, where are you at? We keep all these as intended. It is exactly as we needed to and we press pull. Now, if there is an update, it will, um, yeah, <laughs> there you go. So it only added a few SQL updates. So now if we will recompile, it will not do much because all the new uh, new additions that we have are SQL files. So when we execute this, it will apply uh, the SQL content only. Exactly like that. And if we re real we well, oh my god, if we will recompile, it should not really do much. Only the revision. And uh, this is, oh yeah, when we recompile, it is recommended to close this because it will not really work all that well. Uh, this and auth server. Yeah, to fail because it cannot access the server and we will just wait for it to finish loading and then we will immediately close it. Like, thank you for doing your job and <laughs> go, go away. Now, when we execute, it will have the correct revision number and yeah th this is how we update it's very simple again uh, in my current experience it didn't update uh a new system or a new uh, c++ file mostly is sql which is fine it is how it should be but uh let's assume there is an sql file you will need to regenerate a new solution so you will need to go to cmake and do this process all over again. Now we can boot the server. It will update the Git information as we've seen before. It updates Git revision uh, file. So that is basically it. Um, and yeah, we will learn how to add a new custom scripts 
uh, in the future, in the very near future, don't forget to uh, back this up, call it core updated, and we can go by uh, 14 by date 09 2021. You can back this up just like that. And yeah, um, best of luck, guys. Don't forget to copy this, upload into your local storage so you can have uh, a backup of this specific version. And uh, yeah, good luck, guys.